Hello. I've been doing my family genealogy around 20 years now, on and off. Through my Bowler English family, all branches, I have been able to go back to the 1100s, where some of the family were British lords and held massive land holdings. I've run into records from early times in England and documented in books and historical and submissions, which lead to our lineage to Charlemagne, also known as Charles the Great, and also as Charles the First. He was king of the France, Franks from 768 and king of the Lombards from 774, also emperor of the Romans from 800. His wife, Hildegard of the Vanzau, who was a Frankish queen consort and the second wife of Charlemagne, as well as the mother of Louis the Pious. We seem to have in our DNA that we are a very patriotic family. We've had very patriotic members of families on both sides of the pond, as the British like to say, and also those who were always looking for more freedoms, usually religious, and better economic opportunities for their families. There are bowlers that immigrated from Germany. One of my quests is to find out the connection between my English bowler ancestors and a few other bowlers that immigrated to America from Germany. I believe there's a connection. I just have to find it. Some of our branches do include German families other than bowlers. My family ancestors here in America through the Bowler, and Swartz, and Hughes, and Pullen lines have served with bravery in all wars and conflicts, starting with documentation for King George's War, 1774, the French and Indian War, 1754, the American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783, the War of 1812, the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865, the Spanish-American War, both world wars, and all conflicts up to our involvement still today in the Middle East and service around the world. We are a patriotic and loyal bunch generally. Ancestors were farmers, politicians, judges, community leaders, family against slavery, and some who owned slaves, hence the term fighting brother against brother in the Civil War. We have business owners, financial leaders, authors of all kinds and of all kinds of subjects. We are a driven family, it seems, even with a current movie star. As I research and build my family tree with all of its many branches, new ancestors pop up. Before I add them to my tree, I try to thoroughly research all of the data and tools we are given today through computers and the internet. I search birth records, baptism records, marriage records, divorce records, U.S. censuses, land titles, immigration documents from ships. You'd be surprised what is out there online today. After this research, you can prove without a doubt someone is definitely in your tree. I am confident of the information I put into my tree. However, always keep an open mind if new proof becomes available to either further reinforce or perhaps cast a doubt. Getting back to some of the records, it's amazing to look and find a picture of somebody from 200 years ago or to see their signature on their enlistment record from the War of 1812. I have a grandfather, Bowler, who was in the War of 1812 and I saw his sign-in document that he signed. The reason for this video today is over the last few weeks I've been researching uh, the Adams family through Mary uh, Margaret Peggy Adams that came up. And that's a lineage back through my mother's maternal line as she was married to Thomas Pullen. My mother, Velma Irene Hughes, you'll see the cursor there on the left hand side, her mother was Ursa Hughes. The Pullen line goes clear back to the furthest research as of this time to a Thomas Henry Pullen, clear over here on the right top, born in 1632 in Dacre, Yorkshire, England. On that path to Thomas Henry Pullen, we have many five times great-grandfather, 
I didn't mean many, I meant my five times great grandfather, Thomas E. Pullen, and his wife, Margaret Peggy Adams. So here's where it becomes interesting. Margaret's father was John Adams Sr. Now records show it was senior because there was another John Adams who was younger at the signing of the marriage license. So they made him, uh, they made the groom senior. I have found many instances in my tree of generation after generation having the first and last name of parent and child the same without any designation of senior or jury, junior, first, second, or third, whatever. Usually no big deal, but my Pullen family seems to be adverse to having middle names. So story here, from this point forward, always give your children middle names and quantify so there's other distinction between the family. Now going to open the tree for John Adams Sr., who is the father of Margaret. And that we can see his family information now here. We see here that my fifth great grandmother, Margaret Pullen, had a brother, John Adams. There are other family members that I don't have listed yet as I'm still trying to prove all of that information. So when I click on Margaret's brother, John Adams, lo and behold, who was he? The second president of the United States of America. So Margaret's brother, John Adams, was my sixth time great uncle and also second president of the United States of America. But we don't stop there. If you remember your history, John Adams' son, John Quincy Adams, became our sixth president of the United States. This makes him my seventh times cousin. I think I got that right. I feel a lot of times people think it's a waste of time doing genealogy, but the things you can uncover doing this research is amazing and just makes you feel usually better about yourself and where you came from and perhaps why you are who you are and maybe give you a little bit more hope for the future. Hope you enjoyed this presentation.